All right, I want to welcome you back here. We're in Genesis chapter number 49. And uh, Genesis chapter 49, we're probably going to take at least two sessions here with this, uh, with this chapter because there's so much packed into here. And, uh, and I want to kind of break this, uh, break this down for us because I know we've, we've kind of sped through some of um, the, 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 the various chapters here in, in Genesis and we've kind of wanted to give a kind of overview. But here at the end, I want to kind of reach back and touch several things that we, some of them we completely skipped over, some of them we just kind of briefly mentioned. And, uh, and I want to look back and kind of touch on some of those things again to help us to understand that the decisions that we make uh, today, they affect us, they affect our, the rest of our lives. And, uh, and, and they not only affect us, they affect other people. Um, the, this is one of our Bible truths for our HOPE program, is the sin that you commit affects other people. And, uh, and so, we, uh, so I want to so focus in here on this, um, on this for just a minute. Verses 1 and 2, let's just read those couple verses here. It says, And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. Now let's pause here for a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for your word. And Lord, I pray that you'd grant us understanding of your word today. I pray, Lord, that you would challenge our hearts and that you would help us to, uh, to see the, uh, the challenges here from your, from your word and that we would take them seriously and that we would apply them to our own hearts personally, individually, and that we would honor you uh, by the decisions that we make today as a result of studying your word here. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. All right, so we kind of have this introduction here. Now, last week and last uh, during the last session, we we talked about um, from chapter forty-eight how Jacob has has um, uh, blessed now um, Ephraim and Manasseh, Joseph's boys, and he's adopted them as sons into the family. And uh, we touched briefly on them taking the uh, the spot really of the firstborn and of of uh, of, uh, of Simeon and Levi, and now Ephraim and Manasseh kind of put into that spot, put it in that place. And so, um, and so now he has moved from there, and Jacob knows he's nearing the end of his life, and he's calling all of his sons now together. And he, with chapter 48, did this specifically with Joseph and Joseph's sons. Now in chapter 49, he's kind of gathering the rest of everyone else together. And, uh, and so some of these, and, and and, and it was just kind of typical in this in this day and age in this culture that um, that they would at the end of life that the patriarch the grandpa if you will uh, would gather all of the kids together and bless them impart to them their uh, their their inheritance if you will the the blessings of the family the birthright so to speak and uh, and so these what he's what Jacob though does is gives to his sons not so much blessings as prophecies and uh, and this is the this is the first time in scripture as we work through the book of Genesis this is the first time in scripture that a, a conscious prophecy has been spoken by man here in the Bible God has prophesied some things and some people have said some things that they didn't realize was a prophecy um, that we that we know of they didn't realize that it was a prophecy, um, but now Jacob says, "I'm going to be, I'm going to tell you some of the things that shall befall you." So we know that Jacob knows that these are things that will happen in the future, and so he's conscientious of the fact that um, that he is uh, that he's imparting some prophecy. So, in fact, Jacob refers to the last days, um, giving much speculation about the extent of the prophecy that he had been given by God versus how much he has told his sons. And, and of course, we know that from our, our Sunday morning study uh, on, and our, on our Sunday study of the book of Revelation that the 12 tribes are referred to specifically in Revelation chapter number 7. And so we know that, that God's given Jacob some kind of vision for all of his boys. 
He's given them some kind of prophecy, some vision for them for their last days. And then, of course, that, uh, and we'll talk about it again, but, but that comes to fruition. We see them mentioned in Revelation chapter 7. So we don't know how much of the prophecy perhaps Jacob, God gave to Jacob in his very, very final days, kind of an overview of all of time and, uh, and understanding that there's a, a time for his sons and a time for uh, them to occupy the, the, the promised land and then there's a time where they fall off the scene, but then they come back at the very end. And so we don't know, really don't really know all, anything that we say uh, it would be speculation, but we do know Jacob prophesied and, uh, and then later on in Revelation 7, of course, these, uh, he talks about the last days, and of course in Revelation 7, uh, we have the 144,000 uh, that we'll refer to here in just a little bit. It's interesting here that Jacob refers to himself as both Jacob and Israel. Um, so Jacob called his sons together and uh, gather yourselves together, verse 2, gather yourselves together, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. And so he refers to himself as both. Now this is a mark of some spiritual maturity and growth in Jacob's life as he recognizes uh, and declares what God had made him. That is Israel. God, the, the name that God gave to him was Israel and what he had to battle against, which is Jacob. And you know, certainly that, this is the same thing is true for me and for you. We have this old nature that we're supposed to kill and is supposed to die and we're supposed to and we have to fight against it every single day and we have what God calls us. God calls us saints. God calls us sons. And so the, these two things are constantly um, constantly at, at odds with one another and Jacob recognizes both of these. He recognizes Jacob, the old man. And then he, of course, and he, then he recognizes Israel, what God intends for him to be and what God has declared him to be. And, uh, and so we see this, um, this great mark of spiritual maturity. And certainly there's a, a degree of maturity that's required in order to see that you're both. You are, you know, while you're alive, you have that old sin nature. You're, you're, that, that old part of you still exists. And yet we have what God calls us. God calls us saints. Does that mean I'm perfect? No, no. Nope. Well, that's what that's how God sees us. God sees us as cloaked in His clothed in His righteousness, and what a blessing that is. Because I have no righteousness of my own. From here, from verse number three all the way down to the end of the chapter, He goes to each son and uh, and imparts to them some blessing and some prophecy. And I want to deal with these individually and carefully. And, uh, and so, but I mean, the truth is for some, it's just one short little, one little verse, just a couple of, uh, uh, just a couple of little phrases. And, uh, and that's all we've got for others, uh, a lot more uh, elaborate. So he deals with Reuben, Reuben, of course, the firstborn. And uh, we'll deal with him here in verses three and four. He says, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, thou defi then defilest thou it. He went up to my couch. And so he is the firstborn. Uh, as the firstborn has already been established, even in their culture, for uh, as early as it is in their culture, the firstborn had the right to uh, the double portion of blessing. And, um, and so we, we saw last time that that double portion went to Joseph and his two sons, uh, Ephraim and Manasseh. And, uh, and so, um, so Reuben has already been kind of counted out as the firstborn. But Jacob recognizes you're the firstborn. And so he tells him, my, you're my, my, my might and my strength. Now, in, in, in the society, in civilization, as early as Jacob, the, what made someone, um, what gave someone power, strength, was the large family. A, a large family of sons 
is the source of strength and safety because civilization at that point was kind of might makes right kind of society. Um, and, th- and this was true across the board, not just in, not just with Israel and not just in uh, with the with with Abraham and, and Isaac, but it's true in civilization. Whoever had the most people, they were the ones in charge. And so to have a large family of sons, twelve boys. I mean, that's that's a big family. And so um, so Jacob recognizes though as Reuben as kind of the the beginning point of this uh, of this might and of this strength, this security in having this large family. And then he uh, calls him as dignity, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. And uh, this uh, talks about the rank and the authority of being the firstborn. And so he's both the might, the strength, and the authority, the, the position, the power, uh, or the authority as, uh, as the firstborn. But then he says in verse 4, you're unstable as water. You are unstable as water. Uh, the picture here is the idea of water that is boiling over. Okay, so it, it's where it's harmful if it's touched. And, and it's out of control. Out, out of the controlled environment of the pot, its usefulness is lost. And, it, it, and only harm comes about. You boil water, that can be extremely useful. Boiling water removes... Uh, it kills off any bacteria that's in there. Um, it, it extracts the, um, uh, you think of like tea and, and, and different things, the, the dried leaves that would extract that flavor from the dried leaves. You need the hot water for that. And, uh, and so, but outside the pot, once that, once that water is boiled over and it's outside of the pot, it's useless. Uh, it's it, the only thing it'll do is cause harm. You burn yourself. You burn your hand. Um, it'll put the fire out from that's underneath trying to boil the water. I mean, it's just completely useless. And so he tells Reuben here, you, you your passions burn hot, but they're out of control. Your passions, your passions can be useful. This is so very important for me and for you to remember. Our emotion, our passions, they can be useful. But if they're out of control, they're out of the controlled environment, then we're no, no longer controlling them. That's what caused Reuben to be removed from this position of having this birthright. But he is still the firstborn. And so there is still a blessing. He mentions here that he, he went up to his couch. So he moved from this high position down to this, down to this couch. And so uh, he does still receive a blessing, but it's not nearly the blessing that it could have been, should have been. I'm sure Reuben thought it should have been. Well, that's because he, re, he, he did not maintain control over his passions. And they boiled over. And, uh, and we touched on this last week. Interestingly... The tribe of Reuben ultimately settled on the east of Jordan. Now, if you look at the map of Israel, uh, and you have the Jordan River that, uh, as, uh, as Joshua crossed the Jordan River into this promised land, there's a group that stayed on the east side of Jordan. These are the descendants of Reuben. And so they're kind of on the other side. It's the other side of the tracks, if you will. Kind of a, a fringe territory or, or fringe re- region. And uh, so are they part of Israel? Yeah, sure, but they're, but they're kind of out there on, on their own. Today, you might think of it this way. Today, Puerto Rico is, a, um, is part of the United States. Kind of. Right? It's, it's not a state. It's a territory. They're U.S. citizens, but their representation in Congress doesn't, they don't get a vote. They're represented, but they don't get a vote. Um, So, yes, part of, but different. It's kind of how the tribe of Reuben is. Yes, part of, but they're they're on the other side of Jordan. 
they're kind of out there. Uh, and so never partaking in the, um, in, in the real, uh, the, the contiguous part, if you will, of, uh, of Israel. And if you know the region, there, that section of, of uh, the, there, there's like four bands of that region in that outer band uh, not much agriculture, not much, um, not much going on out there, um, as far as that, as far as any of that goes too. So, so several things there. That is, Jacob tells to Reuben, and uh, and he says, "This is this is your lot. This is your. This is what becomes of you." And uh, and certainly that that held true. Then he moves to Simeon and Levi. He deals with them together because they get the same blessing because they took part in the same sin. Let's read this together. Verse 5, Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. O my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly. Mine honor, be not, be not thou united. For in their anger slew they a man, and in their self-will they dig down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. And there you see Jacob and Israel again. Simeon Levi. Basically, if we could sum this up, he says, I will divide them and, I'll, and I'll, I'm going to divide them and scatter them. Uh, they are, he mentions, first thing he says, they're brothers. Now, obviously, all of these men that he's talking to are brothers. They're all his sons. They're all his boys. But they are brothers. Uh, they are like-minded in their vicious and vengeful heart, which he says, don't, don't let them be united. Don't let the two of them get together because they'll destroy some things. They receive the same blessing because of the same evil deed in wiping out all of the men of Shechem in retaliation for their sister Dinah. We mentioned that uh, and again, that, that account is Genesis chapter number 34. So their passioned and willful anger was the real problem. Um, you know, the Bible talks about a, a godly anger. Be ye angry and sin not. Anger is an emotion um, that wells up. That our, our emotions, we have little control over when they appear. And that's what I mean. We, have, we don't have control over we do have control over our emotions, though. Uh, anger is um, anger is an emotion, but when we allow that emotion to be in control, anger is now a decision that we've made. It's a choice that we've made. Much like love, is love an emotion or is love a decision? Well, yes. Uh, both of these, uh, both of these, the same way. Anger. Um, Jacob doesn't condemn them because they were angry. They should have been angry. Their sister was dealt with wrongly. I mean, she was wronged. But how do you go about writing that? What is the just thing to do? And they allowed that anger then to be in control. So often the difference between godly and ungodly anger is self-will. They willed themselves to continue in this anger and to be this way. And so, uh, and, and so you, you see that, uh, that self-will here mentioned in verse number six. So, well, now what? Well, he says he's going to scatter them and, 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 uh, uh, and, and divide them and scatter them. He's going to separate them. Be sure to keep these two separate, right? So Simeon, uh, Simeon has a curse. Um, he, that is um, that befalls him really this, this prophecy becomes a curse to Simeon uh, Simeon started out in Numbers chapter 1 as the children of Israel now are leaving Egypt after 400 years and you have to remember they just started their stay their 400 year long stay in Egypt really just getting started Right? So these tribes, these men, have time to grow their families. In fact, that's what one of the reasons that Egypt was in a, in a bit of a conundrum because the Israelites had grown to such a population. So uh, Simeon 
in Numbers chapter number one, as they were leaving, as they were leaving Egypt, they took a census. Simeon's was the third largest tribe. The third largest tribe. But by the time they were ready to enter the promised land, Numbers chapter 26, there's another census done. They're the smallest tribe. So they went from being the third largest tribe uh, in Numbers chapter 1 to being the smallest tribe in Numbers chapter 26. In fact, their number uh, so insignificant that they shared their allotment of land with Judah. Uh, you see that in Joshua 19. Um, such a small number of people and really scattered, um, disbanded, not unified like the other tribes were. Uh, they just shared some land with Judah. Wow, that's, that's kind of a curse. Now, Levi, on the other hand, they're, 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 they're being dealt with together. Levi's ended up being a blessing. How is that? Well, because in Exodus chapter 32, if you're not familiar with the story, after they left Egypt uh, and they got, to, uh, they got to Sinai and um, God was going give to the, give the commandments, give the law to Moses, and I uh, went up on the mountain, and the people decided that uh, God had forgot about them, so they made their own God. Well, who stood up against all of that? It was the sons of Levi. So because of their faithfulness during the, cult, the Golden Calf Rebellion there in Exodus 32, they're given a special inheritance. A special inheritance. This is not an inheritance of land. Neither was it for Simeon. All right, Simeon, Simeon and Levi, neither one of them got any land out of this deal. Simeon, the tribe of Simeon has to share land with Judah. They, they're relegated to that. The tribe, of Levi, the, the tribe of Levi, they don't get any land either. But they were given the privilege of being able to serve in the tabernacle. And then later on in the temple. And that, so what they had... Uh, so what their what had been a curse for Simeon turned into a blessing for Levi, not because Levi was something more special, but because of this change that we see in the Levites, in the sons of Levi. We see this change where they're they're changing from being uh, where they changed from being this rebellious and and vengeful and and hateful and angry people to saying, you know what, we're not going to have any part of this. Uh, rebellion here in this golden calf um, scenario. We believe we still believe in the one true living God, and He's still our God. And uh, and so we see these uh, these things that take place. the The main point to drive home throughout this chapter, let me remind you, is that our choices, the decisions we make, they affect us. They not only affect us, they affect other people. These tribes given these blessings and these prophecies didn't just affect the sons it affected the the, the their uh their their heritage their lineage everyone else from that tribe and so we see here the uh the tribe of reuben not able to excel but because of the uh, the decisions that reuben made simeon and levi the tribes of simeon and levi having no inheritance of, in the, of land in the promised land because of the decisions that Simeon and Levi made. My friend, today you're making some decisions. You're making some choices today that are going to affect you the rest of your life. They'll also affect others, the ones that come behind you. So let's take care to make some decisions that are based on the Word of God today so that we can have a blessing instead of a curse. Father, thank you so much for your word. And Lord, I pray that you would help us today. Help us, Lord, to take your word, to implant it within our hearts, to allow it to grow, and that would allow us, allow your word to make us more like our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, Father, I pray that you would um, use your word in our hearts that we would follow after you, give us a determination, Lord, to decide today to live differently 
because of your word, because of the things you've shown us today. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, my friends, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us today. I look forward to, uh, to seeing you next time for our continued studies here. Don't forget Sunday, Sunday night, 730, we'll meet right here on the property. So excited about that. And, uh, and I will see you then. Uh, we will have a video on Sunday morning. You can see me, but I'll see you on Sunday night. All right, Lord willing. All right, until then, God bless you. Have a great day.